Hello and welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host TJ Mabardi. Today we are going to be previewing the Kansas City Chiefs versus Buffalo Bills matchup, the marquee matchup of this weekend's slate of NFL playoff games. And stick around for after the break where I will be giving you my top five, top five units between offenses and defenses left remaining in the NFL playoffs. But before we get into the show, please be sure to like and follow. And for the live viewers, please be sure to use the link to help prioritize your questions by using the link for donations. The link for that is Stream East streamelements.com slash gsmc sports dot slash tip that will be running down on the ticker throughout the show so please be sure to use that getting into the matchup between the chiefs and the bills this is as i mentioned the biggest matchup of the nfl playoffs this weekend and it could prove to be one of the games of the year really where this rivalry almost has a lot of baggage behind it. Josh Allen versus Patrick Mahomes, two of the top premier quarterbacks of their positions as a whole, two younger guys, and they've had a handful of classic matchups already. Great matchup earlier this season as well, where the Bills were able to come out on top. Josh Allen is 3-1 and one against Patrick Mahomes in the regular season. But when it comes to the playoffs, they are 0-2 against the Chiefs. That includes the somewhat infamous game in some ways, the 13-second game between these two teams a couple years ago in the playoffs where the Bills drive down and they score to put themselves ahead by three points left in the game. And with 13 seconds left, the Chiefs get the ball back run two plays and drive all the way down the field in those two plays to get themselves in field goal range. They kick the field goal then. Game goes to overtime, and then in overtime, the Chiefs get the ball first, go down, score, and walk it off. And obviously the rules were even changed in overtime as a result of this game where now since then both teams have a chance to gain possession in a playoff game in overtime that wasn't always the case so a pretty monumental game in the history of at least recent nfl but may very well go down as one of the historical games of all time as well and this game the bills have the chance to sort of rewrite that history and establish themselves as They've been in the contention conversation for a handful of these years now, but really haven't been able to get over the hump. They have the upper hand at least this year because they will be playing this game at home in Buffalo. This will be the first time that Patrick Mahomes has had to play a true road game. He's played 15 career playoff games. In all of them, he has either been at home at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City or has been on the road for the Super Bowl matchup. So the first time in his career that he has to go into another team stadium and win a playoff game. So a lot of factors going into this game, two of the top teams in the NFL. In my opinion, I think that the key matchup for this one is going to be the Buffalo Bills running game versus the Kansas City Chiefs defensive front. Now, the Bills have never really been a premier rushing team throughout the Josh Allen era there for them. It's been very much Josh Allen or bust when it comes to the passing game, of course, but also Josh Allen is such an elite athlete that he is able to scramble. They're able to run some designed runs for him but 
they haven't really had a premier running back to be able to take the workload to help support him. And as a result, the entire offense really has fallen on the shoulders of Josh Allen. And that's finally not the case this year. James Cook has had an incredible season for them. They didn't even really go into the season looking to feature him as much, I felt like. But down the stretch of the season, they realized what a workhorse this guy could be and what an asset he potentially could be for a matchup such as this. And the Chiefs defense is an incredible group. We will get more into them in the second segment talking about these top five units. But the one area in which they are susceptible is the run game. And if you go back and you look at these two teams' previous playoff games last week, the Bills, they ran for 179 yards against the Steelers, which was better than usual for them. And the Chiefs actually only held the Dolphins to 76 yards. They allowed 113 rush yards per game during the regular season, so that does seem like an improvement, and it was. But this week is a little bit different because if you look at the Chiefs matchup from last week, they had the upper hand in the majority of that game, in that freezing cold game, if you remember. And I think that what's really interesting to think about in that case is you typically think bad weather, cold, you an offense would more likely run the ball but I think I thought that it was really interesting actually on the day of that game there were some tweets flying around um, of people reporting on Tom Brady's mindset when it comes to these sort of late winter games where it's actually harder for defenders to it's actually harder for defenders to run stop than it is to pass stop because of the frozen ground they're not able to get off the get off the ball quite as quickly and be able to make these power rushing moves so a lot of the times you are able to as a quarterback sit back and have a little bit more time now this is just one NFL player's opinion on it, but A, it's Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time. And I just thought that it was interesting, especially coming out in that freezing cold game, ahead of, I should say, that freezing cold game in Kansas City last week, which I just think is relevant because of the fact that it was freezing cold and the Dolphins were trailing for a lot of that, so it's not like the Dolphins really had the ability to take their time and run the ball. They only had 18 carries as a team as a whole, and so with those 76 yards, that's 4.2 yards per attempt. The Chiefs defense allowed 4.4 yards per attempt in their 17th ranked rushing defense through the regular season, so... It is not that the Dolphins had the flexibility, the ability, the patience to work through their typical run game. And I think that Miami, if you've watched them this season, yes, they have, the, of course, the speed on the perimeter with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. But their run scheming up front, I think, is also really impressive. And that was just an element of their offense that they weren't even really able to showcase based off of how the game was playing out so while yes it did definitely look better last week I do think that the Chiefs defensive front still has to prove themselves in some ways I think that they missed Nick Bolton their linebacker for a lot of the season who has proven himself to be a true leader of that squad so yes they were definitely missing him for a good portion of the season how much is he going to be able to impact and raise the floor of this defensive group as a whole. Again, I mentioned they are one of the best units left remaining in the NFL. So I just think that if there were an area where the Bills should sort of look to take advantage, it's in the run game. Legereus Sneed, the cornerback for the Chiefs, has established himself as a premier cornerback for them. 
So I think that this is, all in all, if you look at this game, I think that it is incredibly important for the Bills to win this one because not that, I'm not a huge believer in saying like the championship window I think that it's a lot more fluid than a lot of people typically present it as it's not that the if the bills don't win this year they are done for good but this is easily the best chance they have had up to this point at home they're actually two and a half point favorites which I have to imagine would be Patrick Mahomes' first time as an underdog in his playoff career. So I think that this is borderline make or break for them. And I think that for Sean McDermott, the head coach of the Buffalo Bills, I'm not one who typically calls for people's jobs, but in this off season where there are tons of head coaching candidates He's not coaching for his job necessarily. He's had a very good amount of success in Buffalo throughout his tenure there, but there may be a little bit of impatience starting to build up here if they can't get the job done. They're upset at home against their rivals. So just a little bit of a storyline that I am intrigued in and think that it's something to look into couple other factors here before I get to my final predictions. Stephon Diggs, who we know is one of the elite receivers in the league, he hasn't really been so this season. It's been a bit strange to see the way that they've used him. I mean, still very heavy on the targets, and I think that that being said, it's probably not a bad thing that the Bills were able to have as much success as they were going to other people. I thought that Josh Allen at times early in the year when the Bills got off to their mediocre start was looking to force feed Diggs a little more than necessary. Yes, of course, you want to make sure your number one receiving threat is happy in your offense, but I thought that at times it sort of felt a little bit too reliant on him, and I think that Josh Allen's actually at his best when he's looking to spread the ball around. Gabe Davis, who did not play last week, I am actually unsure about his status at this moment, uh, recording this on Friday. So we'll see if he can play, but Shakir has been a huge development for them. Big touchdown last week. Their tight ends are some of the best in the league as far as a unit, I believe, between Dawson Knox and... Dalton Kincaid, the rookie. Talking about tight ends on the other end, Travis Kelsey and the Chiefs. The attack really hasn't been quite the same, and if you look at this Chiefs offense from top to bottom, it really hasn't been the same as we've seen in the Mahomes era here. So I think that it's going to be really important to see how Travis Kelsey handles it. Now again, really cold weather last week. He had a couple drops. He still ended with a pretty solid game somewhere around 70 yards so he he's fine but we need to see I think an elite Travis Kelsey if this team is going to be winning a Super Bowl and now on the other end there Rasheed Rice rookie receiver had a huge week for them last week 130 yards in the win against the Dolphins so that would be a huge development for them if they were able to get that going and some of these receivers Marquez Valdez Scantling has had a disappointing year with a lot of drops Kadarius Tony is almost an afterthought at this point but you know the talent is there so just a lot of a little bit of underwhelming qualities with this Chiefs offense and yet when you have Patrick Mahomes it is really hard to put out a bad product and as far as my prediction for how this game plays out, I think that I am going to be picking the Chiefs in this one. It's really tough. I at least like them to cover, I believe. But it's one of those things where, yes, this is a new experience, new environment for him being on the road in the playoffs. But And that Buffalo crowd is crazy. But I just think that their defense has rounded a corner has really carried them this year 
and we have seen Patrick Mahomes make big plays all throughout his young career already, and I expect him to do so against what is a good, talented Buffalo team, but a lot of injuries on that defense, missing their top linebacker and top cornerback. Terrell Bernard went out last week. Not sure what his status is quite yet. And McDermott is a fine coach, but I think that they have the advantage with Andy Reid. So my pick will be the Kansas City Chiefs for that one. And we will be talking more so about that defense in Kansas City and the rest of the top units in the league on the other side of the break. So please stay tuned. <laughs> 